Advancing Domestic Peace is one of the organizations working to stop domestic violence before it happens again. And here to talk about how they're doing just that, please welcome Mike Finnerman, Terry Pope, Vidal Torres, Tommy Rucker, and Stephen Brown. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. First of all, Mike, I want to start off with you. Tell us a little bit about Advancing Domestic Peace. Explain what that means. Well, we started out as the West Side Domestic Abuse Project. That was a collaboration among uh, several organizations, the uh, University of Illinois through the Jane Addams College of Social Work and the Department of Psychiatry, uh, CAWC, who uh, you had on earlier, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Haymarket Center. Uh, we came together to start providing some services on the west side of Chicago because there weren't many services in Chicago then. Right. Uh, after a few years doing this, we realized that some, first of all, our scope had expanded. Uh, we had taken over some groups on the south side that had grown from one group in a church on 73rd Street to five groups, and so we rented a, an office space on 79th Street, mm -hmm. and uh, it was we were no longer just on the west side, and right. we were serving people from all over the city. And tell me what your mission is and what you're doing. What, we, what we're doing is working with people who've been abusive to an intimate partner to help them stop their abusive behavior and to learn uh, new ways of dealing with conflict and to start helping to build uh, safety and peace in their communities. Mm -hmm. And Terry, let's talk about you for a second and, and what you're doing with your programs. What do you work on specifically for men and women in your groups? Uh, we work on accountability. Accountability for controlling and abusive behaviors, um, beliefs, beliefs about men, beliefs about women, beliefs about relationships. Um, we work on developing skill sets, skill sets that ensure or hopefully um, make everyone feel safe in the homes. We talk about the effects of uh, domestic violence on children, mm -hmm. on families, and communities at large. Right, and you've, accountability is so important to yes. me. Is that a difficult step to get an abuser to get to, or are they willing to accept accountability? It depends. It depends. Um, there are some people that come in that really feel that they've done nothing wrong. It's about that core belief that they're behaving maybe um, in ways that their family saw. You know, they, they look at what they, they grew up with. Right. And so they're following that same trend, that same pattern sometimes. Other times we have people who are absolutely accountable, that they realize um, that what they've done is not good, not healthy, not safe for anybody. And they come in and they seek assistance. Mm -hmm. Vidal, let's talk about your program and the techniques that are used. Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, in the uh, uh, social work and family shelter, we have this uh, group about uh, uh, teaching, like uh, Teresa is teaching the men, you know, who come to the group, uh, how to resolve these conflicts, you know. And uh, yeah, we're going through uh, uh, different stages. The men go through different stages of, uh, uh, of changing, mm -hmm. you know, changing the behavior. They come to the group kind of uh, uh, without, I didn't do nothing, I just push her, I just touch her, and uh, Eventually, you know, we help them understand the impact, you know, that they do with the, with the partners. Mm -hmm. And not only with the partners, with the family too, you know, because there is children involved. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we, uh, that we focus, uh, first of all, in, 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 in victim uh, uh, safety. Mm -hmm. And then we go working with the, with the men. Beliefs are a huge portion of that we have to go go through it. And Tommy, you have been through the program. How has going through this program helped you look at your own anger or frustration issues? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, the, the most important thing it did was let me identify, you know, who I am and where, where I really choose to be, uh, you know, moving forward. I have, uh, I was one of the people that had a real problem with accountability, feeling like I didn't really um, you know, do too much, but you know, as you address those core beliefs and you address um, the things that uh, you know led to what it, you know the situation that we have, um, you learn that you know certain traumas that you've been through in your life, childhood traumas that I've been through, experience, um, those become a, a normalized dysfunction for you, like a certain way of life, and you 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 ultimately believe that uh, you know you're just doing your what normal you yeah. what you saw. And so now I'm able to clearly identify, you know, how those behaviors, you know, affect um, my children, affect my partner, affect um, all the relationships of the people that I have around me. And uh, it has been beneficial 
Yeah. Very beneficial. I gotta say, uh, I'm gonna commend you for being here today. Yeah. And it's yeah. not easy to come on television and talk about your faults and talk about the other side of this. Yes. But what would you say to people who are being abused? What are the first signs? What should they do? Um, if you are in an abusive relationship, the first thing I think you should try to do is seek some type of professional help, some type of counseling, some type of uh, um, something to help yourself just like get over it. Um, I've witnessed people going through domestic violence that have ultimately committed suicide that I know personally um, just from the depression, not knowing how to deal with it. So uh, first and foremost, try to get some help. Try to get some help. Don't try to handle this by yourself. Don't don't think that you are the, the key, the problem solver to, you know, what's going on with you and you're the reason why it's happening to you because you're not. All right. Stephen, you do some great work in the community, and I want to get you in here to talk about a little bit more about the Neighborhood Barbers for Peace initiative that you're doing. The barber is one of the most ancient art forms, and throughout those art forms were passed on tools to how to shape, manipulate the hair. One of the great aspects is teaming up with CADP to use to give barbers and personal care professionals tools so that we can see what's happening in certain situations and rec do get recommend recommendations, do referrals, and also take some of the tools that they have and place them in areas such as the bathroom where the perpetrator you know, is not monitoring everything that the victim is doing. So uh, teaming with the CADP has given myself um, and the other team of barbers and barber teachers tools, and we actually bring them out. Uh, they do reenactments, uh, and you should see the responses. Right. It's, it's kind of like a, an update to a computer. You've done certain things and it's normal, but you need an update because it's affected everything around you. And by being a personal care professional, uh, mainly in the barber teacher, we see everything. Mm -hmm. Right. You tell us. And you hear all the stories. <laughs> yes. And exactly. And so uh, I think a couple of years ago, the department, uh, Illinois Department of Professional Regulations has mandated that cosmetologists, estheticians, and nail techs do continue educational units with domestic violence. But because barbers, we don't have to fulfill that requirement, we decided to do the initiative on our own. Right. And I want to thank you and salute you and all of you for being here. We appreciate it so much. Coming up next, why there's a need for more support for domestic violence survivors and their families, and then how you can help. Yep, and then coming up later, we are answering your questions about how to take action when it comes to domestic violence. We'll be right back.